I'm not sure how to feel about first-person dungeon crawlers. I like to think that I am a big fan of them, but the grandfather of the genre is too much for me. It always seems that there's a 50% chance of my party getting annihilated with every step I take. But that's just part of the wizardry experience. Thankfully, the world of video games had mercy on me and created much more forgiving experiences for me to enjoy. Titles such as Stranger of Sword City and The Dark Spire stick to old school design, but give it the nice bells and whistles of modern games. Series like Etrian Odyssey took the fundamentals, modernized them and added their own spin. There has also been a relatively recent trend of taking the formula and giving it a colorful and light-hearted facelift, often featuring lots of... flair. But today we're traveling all the way back to 1992. In that year, a company called HAL Laboratory was about to score big by kickstarting one of Nintendo's major franchises. But in March 27th, exactly one month before that, they self-published a game by the name of Card Master, the Seal of Rimsalia. Two months later, their American subsidiary, HAL America, released it under the name Arcana. The game starts with a HAL Laboratory logo and a short passage informing you about things that don't matter. It's not until you start a new game that you get some relevant plot. In the island of Elemon, six kingdoms were constantly at war with each other. It was such a regular occurrence that people started accepting it as normal. Until they didn't. The situation escalated and there was a big kerfuffle as the six kingdoms fought each other for control of the land. In the kingdom of Wexford, one of the king's retainers, Gaunion, rebelled against the king, killed him and took his place as ruler. He must have been a really cool guy, because even Kirby and his clone joined his army. The king's two daughters also went missing. For the next 10 years, Rooks, the protagonist, lived peacefully in the village of Gallia. During the rebellion, his parents fought to protect the townsfolk, but a friend of his father betrayed them and led to their deaths. Rooks inherited their magic powers and trained every day in order to become a card master. Once you get control, you're free to walk around the village, but as soon as you try to leave, you meet Ariel, a childhood friend of Rooks, who mentions that evil spirits have started appearing all over Wexford and asks Rooks to investigate the Baunia Temple. He also leaves Tifa, his apprentice, in Rooks' care. Since there's absolutely nothing suspicious about this, Rooks accepts Ariel's request. You're now free to go explore the dungeon, but you might want to buy weapons first. Enter the store and spend your pocket money on a stick or something else that will at least let you smack enemies around. You can also buy some useful items, such as medicine and rings that teleport you out of the dungeon. There's also the inn, where you can fully heal your party and save the game, the bar, which sells food that recovers a tiny bit of HP and MP, but is completely useless since you can just sleep at the inn. And finally, the fortune teller stand, which is the most interesting. In here, you can buy a variety of cards that can be used in battle for certain effects. The four elemental cards can be unleashed individually or up to three at once, which deals more damage. They are extremely cheap and you can carry a ton of them, so these cards are a very effective weapon through most of the game, although they often miss some enemies. There are also fog cards that allow you to instantly escape a battle, call amulets which can summon one of four elemental spirits to unleash a powerful attack, and no cards, which have a small chance of instantly killing enemies. Once you're ready, it's time to enter the dungeon. If you've played any game of this kind before, you'll be right at home. If you haven't, rejoice, because Arcana is a good starting point. The entire game is controlled using only the D-pad and the A and B buttons, which in a way is a bit of a shame, but never mind that for now. The game is played in first person as you move around the dungeons in a grid. As you explore, you find treasure, trigger plot events, probably get lost a few times and fight random monsters. A lot of random monsters. 
it's not uncommon to fight upwards of 8 enemies at once, all of them ready to have a bite at your party's flashy existence. Thankfully, the game is pretty forgiving at the start and the enemies aren't particularly dangerous. In addition to physical attacks and a variety of magic spells of varying magical efficacy, Rooks can easily dispose of every undesirable living being around with his cards. Joining him on his quest is Sylph, the Wind Spirit, and eventually the three other spirits representing fire, earth and water. All of which look nothing like the ones on the Japanese cover art. Although they can't equip anything, they learn some useful magic and recover 1 HP and MP with every step you take, meaning that you can be very liberal with their spells. Only one can be active at a time, but rooks can freely swap between them. While the spirits join the party permanently, the other party members will come and go as the pot progresses. This is kind of annoying because they never come with any equipment, even though their sprites show them holding weapons. There are several instances when they join in the middle of a dungeon, so if you don't have any spare equipment, well, tough luck. Which brings me to one of the game's problems, and that is the fact that it's hard to tell whether certain stats have any real effect. No matter how high your strength stat is, you will barely deal any damage without a weapon, which is why the lack of equipment is a bit of an annoyance. There's also the fact that most offensive magic used by your human party members is kind of useless. The single target spells cost too much MP for too little damage, especially when you consider that you fight groups of enemies all the time. The multi-target spells are much better, but you want to hold back on casting them since they are expensive and you can just use elemental cards or the spirits' spells. Some support spells also don't really seem to have any noticeable effect. The only buffs that seem to be worth using are the ones that reduce an enemy's attack and defense. Another thing I noticed is that, strangely enough, the game's only status effect is sweep. There's no poison or stun or anything of that kind during gameplay. There's death if you want to count that, but one of the twists in Arcana's otherwise standard gameplay is that it's game over if any of your non-spirit characters kick the bucket. Another problem is the interface and how the game feels to play rather than the gameplay itself, if that makes any sense. Walking around the dungeons is a bit slow and the menus have a minor delay, particularly when you bring it up. Items can also only be bought one at a time and the item list is closed when you do so, which makes it a pain to buy things beyond the first page. The battles are fine for the most part, but multi-target spells show the damage values one by one. It would be nice if the entire game was faster in general. Having a shortcut to open the map without having to open the menu before would also have been convenient. After a while of wandering around, you reach the end of the first dungeon and holy crap, wow, I never saw that coming, who would have guessed, what a twist. Once you stop getting trashed, you're sent to another town with another dungeon, rinse and repeat for a few more times. The plot isn't very interesting. Some people are trying to awaken an ancient evil, and we just can't have that so it's up to you to stop it from happening. There are a couple of twists, but nothing particularly exciting, and the characters have all the depth of a puddle after 5 hours in the sun. There are also several points in the story where the game forces rooks to fight alone, but the excuses are flimsy at best. This happens with several bosses and even the final battle, so you can't always rely on your other party members. These battles are also kind of boring since most bosses don't do anything other than physical attacks. The final boss is just plain disappointing in this regard since all it does is either a weak physical attack or a powerful multi-target spell. The final dungeon has a nice majestic look to it, but most dungeons look bland, and there's some blatant recycling going on. The game makes up for it with the unique art style. True to its names, the characters are presented in cards, and the color of the borders represents their elemental affinity, which is supposed to be a big point of battle strategy, although in practice there are a lot of enemies with neutral affinity. The simple animations also help spice things up. The game's soundtrack is mostly positive, a couple of tracks are kind of boring, but Arcana gets it right where it matters. The heroic track for the final dungeon matches its look, 
The theme for regular battles has this suspenseful feel to it, the boss battle music ramps up in intensity, and finally, the theme for the ultimate showdown takes cues from the other two and creates concentrated awesome that makes the battle way more exciting than it really is. The game isn't terribly long and the difficulty feels just right, despite the gameplay quirks. However, it feels a bit incomplete. Characters have 4 equipment slots, but you never find anything to equip in the last one. There are several unused items, including some rings that I imagine would go on that 4th slot. There are also items that are supposed to cure petrification and paralysis, but your characters are never inflicted with those during gameplay. There's even a scene where you heal a petrified character in a cutscene. During the credits, you see your party members in a little card that spins around three times. The final one is Ario, which is weird because he never joins your party at any point. I'm left wondering if that wasn't supposed to be the case at some point. One last thing to mention before I conclude this bolted video is that the English translation is... less than optimal. The dialogue occasionally goes into nonsense territory, and magic spells originally had ridiculous names but now have things like attribute 1, 4, 6, 11, which is just lame. There are also various name changes, some of them due to Nintendo's regulations. The last chapter takes place in a castle residing in the capital of Wexford, which is translated as Bissons in the intro, but as Bintel in the chapter. And on that same note, in the Japanese version, Vexford was called... Vexfart. So yeah, Arcana is... good. That's really the best way to describe it. It's a fairly standard dungeon crawler that doesn't do anything exceptional, but a game doesn't need to do that to be worth playing, and Arcana's pros definitely outweigh the cons.